Wait, to, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So what's going on, guys, in the world today? You know, I, I didn't really know my audience and kind of what you guys were looking for, man. Like we, we like like we kind of do it all, man. We sell a bunch of houses, you know, as an independent, you know, um, 11th in the nation before I moved over and you know, started doing my thing. And I know before you started like thinking, oh, crap, like another top influencer shit. 12 years ago, I was making three hundred dollars a week as an ISA on the phone. That's how I got into real estate. You know, I actually came from a, a, a poverty situation. And so I've just took every opportunity and maxed it out. You know, my, my grandpa said, if you're going to be uh, a ditch digger, you might as well be the best ditch digger there is for that day. Because it isn't about, you know, like, you know, any of these other opportunities from any other company, or if I was still an independent, I would be winning or the opportunity from EXP is what we do with that opportunity, right? That actually opens the door for the next opportunity um, EXP is just, you know, for me, a blessing. I made a million dollars off revenue share. I got about 1,200 agents, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, 2,500 agents, you know, in my network and closing houses in about five countries. And so in my mind, I think that this is agent attraction. And, you know, we, we can definitely tear this up with some of our systems, things that I learned how I got started. I didn't know anything about geometric growth. I didn't know anything about compounding interest. I didn't know anything about tap routing. I didn't know anything about none of this stuff. Like I was independent. Some of you guys from KW got you, you understand the seven tiered partnership, but I didn't, I knew how to generate leads. I built a call center. Yeah, I know how to get on the phone and hustle and get in front of people and get deals done. And we were closing a thousand houses a year back in 2012, 2013. Um, you know, jumped in the top 10 and that, and that's what I knew, you know? And so, um, I don't know, like what you guys were looking for, if you guys could put, you know, in the chat box, if you've ever like sponsored anyone put no or yes, like, we got 50 people on here. I like 50 people to put in the chat box, no or yes. I just want to see the numbers who has ever sponsored someone with EXP. Yeah. Like, I, like, I don't know my audience here. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's, it's a little bit of both, man. So you got some people that um, are with EXP, some people that's not with EXP kind of checking it out. We mm -hmm. got people that are, are interested oh. in, um, in 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 growing their real estate business and sales and stuff like that. Um, you know, we had all the stuff in there about, you know, how you was able to, you know, create the ISA business, you know, oh. how you was able to build, you know, you know, nationally. So, I mean, I think it's going to be a little bit of both. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to get some questions from people from, Right, uh, you know, a few different areas in and of itself, right. but um, yeah. but yeah, man, like I mean, just like you know, you you kind of went into your, your your backstory and you know how you know how you got to where you are, um, and you know, just mm -hmm. kind of continue on that aspect of it, man. Like a lot yeah. of folks, they just want to they want to grow a really good business and then at the same time be able to take advantage of um the opportunity we have here. Yeah, well, you know, I would grab a pen or a pencil, even the shortest pencil is going to be, you know, better than, you know, your best memory, right? And so hopefully you can take some notes and, uh, yeah, and I don't know how much time we got, man, like, because like, we can let it flow, and I'll take questions and we can do whatever. You got to be you got to, you know, facts tell and stories sell, you guys hear this stuff, but you got to create your own story, you have to create your narrative. Like when James hopped in, you know, that hot tub or where were you at in Cabo or whatever, you know, and people were picking my brain, I'm not smarter than any of you guys on this call. And I'm not special. I'm not, you know, and I'm not more talented or, I, you know, it's just, I have a work ethic, right? And I'm very prideful in my story. Most people want to make it seem like it's sunshine and lollipops. Like, I'll tell you, I ate a lot of crow and I've been through a lot of shit to get to where I'm at. And, and, I, and so then I take a lot of pride in my work and the people that I do it with and the tribe that I'm building and the results that we're getting. However, you have to build your own story or sell someone else's story until you can build yours, right? Like Gary is on here, it's like selling my story. I was selling Brent's story. I was selling Jeff Williams' story, Rob Flick, Gene's story. And I can remember a couple of years ago, I have 500 people and I was standing in Mexico and a lot of people were like, man, this kid's crazy. I said, I'm not Gene, I do things differently. I'm not Brent, I do things differently. I said, "Here, but here's what I am, I'm next. And when you get a foundation built and you attract like-minded people like uh, James and you know, uh, like you guys have built this tribe, right? And it's, and it's like, that, that's what you're looking to build. And we built ours with top agent and experts. And Gary, you know, can attest, he was with EXP. We were just talking about this a minute ago. 
and left because EXP is not going to make any one of you successful. And if the people on here, you know, that are looking at EXP, I might be the wrong person to listen to. And so I'll apologize right up front because I'm not here to sell you on joining EXP and I damn sure ain't, I'm not talking to you. Um, and so I apologize if you think that you're supposed to get something else on this call. However, write down the model explain.com and that will take a three hour conversation and shrink it down to 38 minutes for you. You watch that call. It's basically going to break down the five pillars of wealth that's changed my life with EXP. Um, and, you know, we and I and I used to think that that's thrown around loosely and changing lives, blah, blah, blah. But I've made a million dollars residual passive income within four years. And I've also took a year off in this model, dealt with the divorce after 20 years. I dealt with some death with my father. I dealt with my operation person that was with me seven years running pieces of my business pass away within 30 days. And so like I've had to take different times off for devastation. So I really look at it like I only worked three years to build up to a million dollars residual passive income. And I rebuilt teams and own teams in Toronto and you know Wichita and different uh, things to restart with, but my livelihood isn't tied to it. So for me, for me, it's changed my life. And I don't know about, I don't know what you guys have going on, but I'm telling you, if you build the foundation and you apply yourself or for the new people that are listening, when you watch the model explain.com, give the person, a call that got you on this call and then get them with James or, you know, whoever, you know, that can, you know, articulate the model. And it cost me $385,000 to be with this model. I bought myself out of my equity piece of a brokerage that I, I was the number two um, uh, equity person in. And I built it with from five people up to 90, was opening expansion offices in the top 10 running at the last five years. And I had a couple of other partners that didn't see the vision. You know what? I had to protect myself and my family and my livelihood. And I knew where the future was growing because I was in the trenches on the phone with the call center. I was on the road working with my expansion agents. You know, I'm like really working on marketing. I'm in front of the group presenting and driving sales, closing over a hundred homes a year, not just sitting on an executive board or having an opinion or judging something. And so you know, to get in business with us before it was $50,000 to coach with me when my coaching company was 2000. I won't take a dollar from anyone right now. I like, you can't pay me any money for coaching. And people are like, if I join EXP and I cap the most amount of money you're going to make is $2,800 a year. And they're like, I'll pay you two grand a month. And I said, what I figured out that you haven't learned yet is compounding interest and geometric growth, and I'm going to build through you. I've only sponsored 28 people with this company, and I know I had 116 people join in the last 30 days, but it's off of the systems that we run, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. And so building an empire systems, you probably heard about that, right? Have you, do you coach on that, James? Or like, hey. Okay. <clears throat> now, when you, when you talk about building an empire systems, right, like that, you know, that is you know, very inbound, you know, reaching out to your sphere, tap rooting through all that stuff, but you got to build a database of agents, just like you do with buyers and sellers and se like segment them and communicate with them differently. Like you are going to communicate with a new agent different than a team leader, right? Or a franchise owner or, or someone like that. And so are, like, how many of you guys have a database of agents that you're building relationships with? You're helping them grow their business. Right. The handful of you guys put yes, no in the comment box. We'll just kind of see where you guys are at. That's that's the problem. A lot of you guys. And I'm, when I say you guys, I'm just talking in general. So I don't want you to take it personal. But if you are taking a personal good because it's striking a chord with you. It's like when I used to go to church when I was a kid, I was like, man, like, I swear he's talking to me and me only. You know what I mean? You know, like, you know, like I'm going to get my stuff together when I walk out of there. But it, it, like it's like you want this. Do you want the million dollars a year? Do you want it? And it's growing by five to six percent, you know, uh, profitability and agent count every single month. Like I didn't set out to say I want to be selling houses in five countries. I want a million dollars in revenue share. I focus on the people. And I said, I'm going to sponsor one person and we're going to sell homes because they say that we don't sell homes at EXP. And when I came, they were saying all the low level agents were here. And so there was a lot of different things that we had to pay roads for to create opportunity for you guys to execute on. And I tell my group that, and if you're newer within two years with EXP, you did not miss any opportunity, not with the stock or anything, because I know where like the stock is going to go. I know where the value is at, what is being built, and then also where we're at economically. And when, I, when we joined with EXP, Canada was just getting going. 
We're in 22 countries right now. And the stock is going to pop back when the market comes back. And the people that are going to make the most amount of money with EXP, I believe, are not even with EXP yet. And I, and I believe that. I'm watching the people come behind me grow faster, bigger, and better. And then the people that were that like I was coming up behind, they're like, you're doing it faster, more efficient, and you know, with less effort. I, like I disagree with them, but you know, it's it's it, it, you know, it's all subjective, right? But keep the main thing, the main thing. I don't care if you join EXP. I really don't. Here's and Gary can attest to this. What do I ask people to do, Gary? As far as what? What do I ask them to do if like we're like they want me to talk about EXP or we're like entering in a relationship or they want to pay me for coaching or they want to be like, but they don't want to join EXP or whatever. What do I always ask them in exchange? Just to give you a, a you know, 1% trust. Right. Give me, give me 1% of your trust and I'm going to earn the other 99% because I'm not here to got you. I'm not here to recruit you. Here's what I can do. I can help you grow your business. I can help you sell more houses and we can scale up with the eight stages of growth. I took one guy doing 30 units to 101 year, a hundred closings to 250 his second year. And he's on pace to do 500 this year, helped him get set up with owning ancillary services and all this stuff. And he told me, Adam, I might not be making what you're making in revenue share, but I'm blessed to be connected with you and the people I got connected with. And I said, well, like, why? What's up? He's like, dude, I made $70,000 this month. And I said, I thought it was his, from his real estate team. And he said, no, it was from the other businesses that you got me around and people that, that you know, spawned up from the network. And so there's going to be much more opportunity that comes to fruition. But if you keep the main thing, the main thing with driving sales, that's what works. And actually what I was looking for, Gary, you might want to grab your pencil. He's on calls with me. This is my number two guy. No, I tell, I, I, <laughs> I, no, no, I, I say, I want you to keep an open mind because people are always like, yeah. well, what do you want? Or like, what, like, you're just going to give me everything for free. Like, I'll give you my worry-free listing, our home buyer advantage program, um, or like, like, ever, like you name it. I'll, I will give you the game. And people are like, what do you want? I want you to keep an open mind. That's it. And as long as you can keep an open mind, I'll help you keep growing your business. I don't care if you're a KW, Remax, any, anywhere, because you know what? You're going to wake up one day. And I have a situation with a lady named Teresa. I've been coaching her you know, for a little bit. And we finally got to a point with a mutual agreement where I got to the core with this woman because she's like, man, I really like this guy. He makes a lot of sense. He's selling a lot of houses. I like, and she's piecing her little stuff together. And then like two or three weeks ago, we, she had an aha moment. I had an aha moment because I knew exactly what she was trying to accomplish. But then I had that upfront mutual agreement with her and I led with the law of reciprocity and write that down. The law of reciprocity will change your guys' life. If you do things for other people, like without a doubt, consistently and genuinely, and don't ask for anything in return. Don't never ask. Don't make a with. Don't don't make a withdrawal. Just keep making deposits. It's gonna freak them out, right? And then and they're, like they're gonna start thinking like, man, what does he want? What this? And then they ask me. I said, I just want you to keep an open mind. They're like, no, come on, man. Like, no, you no. I that's all I want. Because here's here's what I know what's gonna happen if you keep an open mind. And I can help you grow your business and you can sell more houses. You know who's going to be attracted to that? Other people that want to be attracted with like-minded people. And they want to sell a lot of houses. And that's how what makes recruiting easy. When people are like, you guys are recruiting, you're 28th ranked and you're doing all this. You got all these fancy recruiting systems and you got to have all these you know, funnels and all these different things. We're just getting into that in my fourth year. And I'll let Gary talk about some of that here in a minute. But it's like, if you guys focus on your business and you focus on getting one more client, one more listing, one more buyer pre-approved. There's someone struggling at Compass right now or at Redfin or a KW or Brookshire, where at whatever. And they see you getting through this shift. They see you getting through this paradigm shift and you're surviving, you're paying your bills, you're growing, you seem happy, right? Like, they, like we're all going through some stuff. It's not the same, it's not easy. However, like, if you're around this time next winter, congratulations. You are now going to be in the game for the next three to five years. And then you can start to position yourself and demonstrate some real leadership with people 
and show them what you are doing. And I promise you, this might sound simple, the law of reciprocity and do things for others and don't ask for anything in return. It freaks people out when they hit me up. And then they're like, well, what do you want? It's like, keep an open mind. They're like, all right, what else? Because everybody is used to them looking after their best interests or just recruit me or whatever, right? And it's like, I don't care if you join EXP. I tell people that because my business is going to keep growing because the fundamental principles that I built this on, we're going to keep selling houses. We're going to keep growing and it don't matter what you do. However, if you work around our space and in our proximity, you know what you're going to do? You're going to grow. And then you're going to be like, these people, I fuck with them or I don't, right? And I use that F word because I drop the F bomb a lot. And it's like, oh, okay. that, that, could, that, that could offend some people, right? However, I'm attracting my tribe, right? And it's like, and, and so like little, little things, you know, if they're your people or not. And I'm not saying the F bomb makes or breaks things, but I did it because I wanted to get your attention, right? And it's like, I, I, it's like, you know why James likes me? You know, people see me in masterminds. They're like, Adam, you're the same person every time I see you. <clears throat> and my tribe, my group, we hang out with each other at the event. And that's why I mess with Levi. That's why I mess with James. That's why I mess with like their people that I met because they stick together. And then you know what they're doing at night? They're not being fake or they're not kissing ass. They're sticking with their people and they're all sticking together because it's real relationships and they're building real businesses on a real foundation. And so, you know, if people come because I had to convince them, twist their arm, recruit them, yeah. promise a bunch of stuff to them, or whatever, if I had to do all that, you know what? They're gonna leave when someone else does that to them. And we're going into recruiting season, guys, right now. Like the time is now to put the pedal to the metal. However, Gary heard me talk about this last week. If you're not dating your agents and you're not loving them and you're not collaborating with them, you're not understanding, are they hitting their goals? We're all struggling, right? And if you're not empathetic to that and you're not helping cast that bigger vision, they're gonna perish. But if you're not dating them, I guarantee another broker or brokerage is dating them, right? And so I would double down with all your people and be thankful for what you have right now. If you got a group of five, if you got a group of three, if you got a group of like James 1500, lean in to your leaders, right? And then build through them with, with a lot of that stuff. And the building in the empire system, uh, we have brand. And then, you know, we can get into some of the database management, some of the tech pieces and, and some of the, the, you know, more logistic things as the questions come up. But I want you guys to understand, I built this on selling houses because you can judge me, you can have your opinion of me and you can say whatever the hell you want to say about me, but can you outsell me? Can you out hustle me? Because Will Smith, Will Smith says it best. If you and I get on that treadmill at the exact same time, I guarantee your ass is getting off before me, right? And if you have that type of work ethic and, and not look up to your upline like, oh, they're not doing this for me or I'm not getting this or this is what I was told or things change this year. This is not about your upline. You are doing this because of you. You are given an ownership equity opportunity. I'm on Brent's second level. Jeff Willems sponsored me. I'm on Gene Frederick's fifth level. I don't give a damn what either one of those guys do for me. I'm thankful for what they do do for me when they do it and people go around me, but I don't base my business or my feelings on what they do or don't do for me. And actually, by the way, those guys are all mega superstars in EXP. And do you think I call them with all of my little problems or things I need help with or whatever? I, I hold it up and then I like, take solutions to them, right? I take solutions to my upline. And so if, if you're gonna work back up with your upline and you're not getting what you think you should get, bring solutions to the table. And here's what I tell my people, because this has served me best from making 300 bucks a week in real estate to becoming an agent that sold 24 houses my first year to becoming a top agent, to starting a coaching company that did a half a million dollars organically a year while I was building the brokerage and I was only in real estate my fourth year. Here's what I tell people, whatever you are bitching about in your mind or you feel some type of way about or any of your people around your space, build it, do it. That's what I love about Gary. And uh, he came from Century 21. He's like my right hand guy. Like you know, him and I just crossed paths five months ago. And I, it was like kind of a busting how we came in contact. He didn't get the creative control that he gets with me and he sees it. And then I tell him, I'm like, Gary, this is, and he's like, I already got it going. 
And I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, because I see the same thing you see, or I hear the same thing you hear. And so he's not sitting around waiting for me, Gary, let's build this, do that. He just does it. And that's what I tell my people. If you're missing something in your business or part of our overall modern team, step up and do it. Because I, you, none of you guys work for James. None of you guys work for me, right? In terms of what I tell my group, we are all here because we want a better way, right? Yeah. And that better way is through contribution with each other. So I, I know I spent some game here for about 20 minutes with my story and some very simple rules of life and in business that will change your life if you apply them. And I'll take some questions and then I'll build on top of that while I catch my breath. And I might let Gary kind of chime in why he was with EXP and then why he came back in a different experience to kind of segue into some other stuff too. Yeah, man. So there's a, there's a few questions in the chat that, um, you know, that, that they have for you. But uh, once again, man, like, hey, he the same person no matter where he is, no matter who you're talking to. That's why that's why I got him on. Um, he's he's straight, no chaser. So uh, th one of the questions they had on here is, uh, what would you say um, you did to be successful as an ISA for Inside Sales Agent? Hmm. Um, do 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 you want to get on? You know, like that treadmill with me. Like, have you guys? Um, who knows of the hip hip hop preacher Eric Thomas? You guys, you guys know most. Of you guys know about Eric Thomas, right? <clears throat> that th like this question. I I the half a million dollars that I was making off coaching was around a uh, live and direct you know, program. And like, you can listen to us make, you know, we train people through experiential learning. You can listen to both sides of the conversation. You can screen share, you can ask questions, you know, after the call to the ISA, see how we manage the data, all of that stuff. But here's, here's, here's what it is. Most people try to develop an ISA or get an ISA up and going, and they've never done it themselves. And so they don't have a watermark or a benchmark with the KPIs, whether they're the leading indicators or the lagging indicators or the word tracks or structure of calls. And I will give you my closing formula. I will give you a closing formula that has made me millions of dollars and set millions of dollars of appointments in real estate. And I will give that to you. And that will be an ISA nugget for you. Here's the thing though, when Eric Thomas got asked, you know, in this story, one of his first viral stories with this guru, you know, how do you do what you do, right? And this guy was in a, a suit and all dressed up, you know, and Eric, you know, you know, said, hey, meet me down at the beach at what? 5 a.m. And that guy's like dressed up in the suit. Okay, I'll be down here 5 a.m. They meet down at the beach. He's still in the shoes. He's in his gator boots, all that stuff. And, and the guy's in shorts and flip-flops. And that's how it was when I came to EXP. And I didn't understand it when I first seen Brent and all of them in a mastermind, they were all in flip-flops and tank tops. And I'm used to going to masterminds in a different style. And I was like, what are these clowns doing? And it's like, what, did I make the right decision? Right. And then it's like, you know, come out here. And it's like, like, no, I thought you were going to show me what it takes to develop or become an ISA or whatever. It's like, step out into the ocean, right? And if you guys know the story, the water goes up to his knees, goes up to his hips, goes up to his chest, to the water is up in his mouth, right? And then the guru grabs him and puts his head underwater and says, take another step forward. And he's like, I can't breathe. And he's gurgling water, right? And he's like, look, like, and he, so he lifts his head back up and he gasps for air. And then he said, okay, stop. And he said, at that very moment, when you want things as bad as you want to breathe, that's when you will do it. For me, my livelihood was tied into getting off 300 bucks a week. I was driving around an 89 Buick with the windows that could barely roll down, uh, no AC, you know, selling insurance before that. And the market crashed 08, 09. And I was doing somewhat well, but then the economy about wiped me out. And I said, I will never, ever be that vulnerable ever again. And so since 2009, 2010, I've kept my foot on the fucking pedal because I'm never going to have an economical win. I'm never going to have a government win. I'm never going to have anyone else be able to strip anything away from me like it did in 2009, 2010. And I'm thankful that it did that because I wouldn't have met a guy by the name of Mike Gerbic. And all of you guys need to follow him. He's one of the smartest people in EXP. He changed my life. He's the guy that got me into real estate. He's the guy that gave me ownership. He's, he's the guy, and he, has, and he retired. 
And then I talked him into coming back with me and building this with me. And he has a thousand of my 2,500 agents. And so, uh, you know, I'm thankful, you know, for, for people like that. But all he did was give me micro commitments that created another opportunity for me. He bought Vulcan 7. He bought um, uh, Mojo. And then I was setting expired in FISBO, not because I wanted another listing appointment, it's because I had to put food on the table. I had to pay my electric bill. At that time, I also, you know, was not really that shaped and formed yet and kind of was, you know, a chip off the old block and I might've had some fees I had to pay or something like that, who knows, you know what I mean? Like, and so it's like, I was having to do those things because I wanted it as bad as I wanted to breathe. And Mr. Gerbic turned me on to Jim Rome. Mr. Gerbic turned me on to Zig Ziglar. So instead of listening to all my rap and all my hip hop, and all my other stuff at 27, 28, 29, I started to listen to Automobile University and I started to study personal development. And I said, holy shit, like I came from a poverty situation and yeah, I graduated high school, first person in my, my you know family to graduate high school. And I got a lot of cousins and a big family, and, but it's like, I never really heard people talk like that before, right? And at first I thought it was a bunch of blah, blah, blah motivation, but then I started to apply some of these principles. And one of them is the law of reciprocity because I used to be like, man, I do this for you. What am I gonna get as bartering or can I get an upper hand? And it's like, oh, well, win, win, right? It's like, no, I will help you and I will not ask for anything in return. And that's the hardest thing to do when you're dead broke and you don't have anything. That is when you're tested, right? With that. And so what I did for Mr. Gerbic is I came in and worked for that 300 bucks a week. I came in and did a lot of stuff for him. Even when I started blowing his business up, I had Remax after me. I had KW after me, offer me 200, $300,000 a year positions. Like we were going, we were shooting up the rankings. I was speaking at places and I stayed humble and I stayed committed because I wasn't done learning. It wasn't about the money. It wasn't about the, the fame. It wasn't about the ego, even though I had a bunch of ego back then, but he knew how to manage it with me and he knew how to get me around the right information at the right time. And so that personal development piece with the ISA piece had me grow because I couldn't set appointments in a certain price range. And I used to be like, why can't I set appointments in certain price ranges? Because I didn't know how to talk like them. People want to do business with people that look like them, sound like them. You know, they they can articulate themselves and, and they have the same views or whatever. And so I started to learn this through personal development. It's like, but what if I don't believe this or that? And so what I had to learn how to do was up my intellectual thought process. It doesn't mean that I have to agree with things or I can actually look at things from a different lens and not be offended by it and actually argue that point, whether I agree with it or not. And these are things that I've had to learn to master over the phone. And I had to master intros, structure of calls. The psychology of leads are actually generated differently, right? From an expired lead to a home evaluation lead to a buyer lead. And I had to figure out cash conversion cycles because the lead would come in, you looking to buy or sell, looking to buy or sell. I almost lost a uh, over a hundred thousand dollars of Mr. Gerbic's money. He was a listing business uh, like on the radio. Right. And he told me, Adam, when I get back, we're shutting these dialers down. We're going to get rid of the ISA. We're going to do this. And I said, why? And he said, I've, you've lost a hundred grand uh, on your idea or whatever, because nobody had ISAs back then. I, I worked in MCI, a local and long distance for you guys that are old enough that remember when local and long distance bills were split out back in the days. Like I worked in one of those bays in Wichita that would sell them. So I had some you know, call center experience and some data management. And I said, no way. I felt so devastated because $100,000 was a lot to me. And then I'd be damned if we're right around that nine month mark with this particular ISA deal and things started coming out of the trash. Things started coming out of the archive. And I said, I told, I said, let's start asking them questions. What changed? What happened? People don't go on the internet, click on a website, register and go buy a house, you know, 30 days later. Yes, those are A buyers and yes, they're out there, but the money is in the data management and the segmenting and in the BNC uh, uh, buyers. And so then I said, I can make a bunch of calls. I can set a bunch of appointments, but I can't make this predictable. I could, you can't scale a hero. So 
yes, my work ethic was good. I want it as bad as I want to breathe, right? And you're not going to get off this treadmill before me, but you can't build a business around a hero. So then I had to figure out metrics. Okay, call volume, connects, valid conversations to appointments. And then I figured out every eight people I speak with, I set a a pre-qualified buyer appointment or listing appointment to our metric and our standard. So I said, I can coach to this. Okay, so then we we kept our metric in between eight and 12. And that ended up being our brand promise with our coaching company, eight to 12. And most people, when they come in, they don't know. I make this amount of calls or I talk to this. And you know, a valid conversation isn't whether you think the appointment went good or not. It's just that if that name matched that telephone number, that the marketing is working, James. Hello, it's yeah. James. Boom. And whether he hangs up on me after my intro or not, that that that's that's on me, right? But the marketing is good because you want to track your marketing. Is the data good, right? Does the profile name match the number? And then can you scale that valid conversation to an appointment? A lot of people come in my coaching program or my brokerage, and it would be 50 to 1. And I say, all right, let's chunk this in bite-sized digestible pieces. Let's get it to, it don't matter the calls. It doesn't, it don't matter the calls. It matters the conversations. Now let's try to get to 30 to one. Let's get to like 25 to one. And there's a big breaking point that's hard to get through with that 25 to one, because then you're getting through intro structure of calls, you know, really being able to master the, 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 the closing formula and things like that. And if you guys actually sweet talk um um gary and i don't know how much time you got and or whatever i don't know if you got appointments after this or i think i'm uh good for another hour so gary can actually show you with uh, some spreadsheets that are being rebuilt for um you know some of our vas if you want to just screen share real quick gary and show them and then if you actually talk nicely to him i have a spreadsheet guy that i'm paying full time that is building these new spreadsheets as we're rebuilding this stuff and giving it out to the network and another spreadsheet that i'm going to show you and if you um, would like to get on a list with us to be able to duplicate this template i mean we we can um you know we can you know we can work something out like so if if gary's going to pull that up and you guys got a little extra time here to look at a spreadsheet i want you guys to grab a pen and a piece of paper i'm going to give you the closing formula i see so many people over the years isas agents even with agent attraction like this can be used in like it like anywhere like yeah yeah yeah, i made it available gary you want you can share it cool all right cool cool let me uh share the sound too just in case all right, so I'm going to I'm going to catch my breath real quick. I'm going to let Gary run through some metrics with you, but this is the most important piece. You have to put the volume in and you have to understand your metrics. And then if you understand your metrics, you can be the worst ISA in the world, but then you can reverse engineer off of that if you have a watermark or a benchmark or you're working with someone that can coach you to that point like Gary or myself or whatever. So I'll let Gary run through this. I'm gonna run and get some water and then I'll come back and give you guys a closing formula and you will be able to get in front of as many people as you can and just promise me that you guys will use it ethically because you're gonna be able to get in front of people. I'll be yeah, right yeah, yeah. So this 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 sheet is customized, right? To So how we approach business. So I just wanna start from the fundamentals, the basic fundamentals either if you're prospecting for buyers or sellers, or if you're doing agent attraction, you have to have a mind map to kind of figure out how your business is flowing, what your target audience is, what your value propositions are, what your offers are, et cetera. So this this component here was designed for what we're doing in Canada um, and sync, and we uh, got an ISA. And so we have our huddle every morning, but we put this together uh, just by how our system flowed, but we we had an ideal, a mind map of how we want to run. So this is accountability piece, and so in metrics, you want to measure the the variables um, on the database that's important. Like what's the goals, right? Like is your goal fifty calls a day, hundred calls a day? So that's in uh, column B, you know. So then the actual dials. So you can monitor that. Are they over goal, under goal, right? Valor conversations. Here's a kicker in our market. So check this out. And I use this as a coaching piece as well. This column is already purchased. 
So, and this is, this is brutal right here. This is painful when you see these numbers. So these are people that she talked to in our system that already bought, guess what? They didn't buy with us. Okay. So that's painful. So that means that we weren't at that top of mind. We weren't doing the follow uh, follow-ups. We weren't doing the proper incubations. We weren't doing, you know, the dispositions, all that, that crazy stuff. Right. So voicemails, wrong number, unreachable. Okay. Here's an important piece right here for me. Okay. I have her write down every objection that she gets. I don't care if it's uh, a repeat, I don't care if she heard it the same thing the day before, and it's not for me to micromanage, but the way my mind works is I like to take this information and repurpose it, okay? So what does that mean? That means if I see a lot of, um, I'm going to wait because of the interest rates are being too high, or I'm going to wait because of, of, of the market conditions, right? If I'm seeing that common denominator, and I'm, we're hearing that every day, so now I know that majority of our buyers have that disposition, that mindset. So guess what? I'm going to repurpose this and I'm going to create content to battle that, right? So I have my ISAs and then I have my agents taking that repurposed information and sending out video with the feel felt found. Hey, we feel your pain. The interest rates, markets, you know, increase is different than it was, you know, a few years ago and actually it's different than it was six months ago, right? We, but what we've, uh, and other people just like you that are buyers have felt the same way, right? But what we found is if you're with the right buyer's agent who's aggressive and ne negotiate a good price with motivated sellers, we're getting a lot of price reductions. We're getting a lot of lower offers. So that lower price can help compensate the highest interest rate. You know, give us a call. Let's set up another appointment. So we can show you how that strategy works, right? So whatever th those objections are, we role play every morning to say, hey, this is how you get better. This is how you overcome that objection. You, you got to become fluent, right? And so, so most agents, okay, correct me if I'm wrong. If, 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 the, if the buyer says, yeah, we're just going to wait till spring, most agents are going to say, okay, I'll call you back in spring, mm -hmm. right? How many people would agree? Most beginner agents, newer agents, don't, don't know any better that their skill set is very low, right? That's what they're going to say. Now, the seasoned agents that know better, they're going to say, they're going to try to fact find, they're going to try to do some more diving in deep, okay? So I won't get into that, but I just want to just point that out. This piece to me is very important. I like, to, I like to monitor that so that way I can see what the market climate is from all the buyers and sellers that she's talking to so we can address that or repurpose that information, Okay. Then you have these other numbers. You got videos. Now, now here's the thing. So if you look at this column here, there's no video sent, right? But guess what? When I figured it out, I was like, okay, now you're going to send out five videos a day. So those buyers who said we're going to wait because of interest rate. So now she's sending out five videos a day saying, hey, feel, felt, found. Okay. Guess what? Now she's getting responses. She's doing what's called a call behind. She's calling behind that video and she's, and she's setting appointments. So just inserting that one little step generated and maximize the opportunity in this disposition when so we're getting some business. Okay, so this is what this part looks like. So this is the, um, the data table, but then you look at the dashboard. The dashboard is gonna break down the percentiles how many appointments end of the month, month to date appointments, year to date appointments. So, and so it just breaks everything down. Okay. Um, and let me see here. I just want to show you this one. Okay. So this is the, 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 the actual data table where the client, the day, um, the client's first and last name. Okay. We'll just go down here. Okay, uh, where the lead came from, you know, Google or Facebook, booked an appointment, whether they were a show or no show. And if they were a no show, we just rescheduled, right? Whether it was a buyer, seller, kind of the, the status, warm or hot, pending, and then the agent that we gave it to, and then the next steps, the appointment. Okay, and then also the budget, 
of the buyer or seller and and then the notes that that came from came from sync so you know everybody measures different things but these are basically variables that you should be measuring if you're talking about isas or if you're even talking about you making personal calls yeah so let me so let me interject here this is also um a sheet from up in canada toronto you know helping uh you know, get some things going there. Now, there's a master tracker and an ISA call log. And that's what Gary is talking about. They serve two different purposes. Did you differentiate the two, Gary? No. Okay. So the ISA call log, guys, you need to track the essential metrics and then you could track more than that. And it's the core, right? And so with, with um, you know, with the ISA call log, it is just numbers. That's all it is. It's numbers. It's data. Okay. Now the master tracker, what Gary just ended with right there, what I came back and, you know, into, you know, listening to, uh, from grabbing some water, that is the, the actual feedback loop and the accountability piece and the tracking to addresses and names. And so, you know, it's more characters, it's letters, right? It's words. And so you need both of them and you need both of them to be able to work together in real life time. And there's some chemistry in terms of inside sales and outside sales, but I'm not going to get into that. You asked me what it takes to become a good inside sales agent or to set that up. <clears throat> so Gary, um, like, like when he said, like, I love it. Like, what are, do you hear every day? Like, I love hearing Gary when he came on with me, he like, he thought just like me, Gary and I had never worked together. However, we, we had the same principle. We had the same like uh, framework. So with my ISAs, we listen or we record calls and then we would listen to them at the end of the day, or we would carve out the, the objections or the appointments that didn't get set, like the actual conversations. And then the ones that did get set to build a library. And so if you're hearing the same thing every day, you might want to take a step back and actually look at like, how can you, you know, build some education around it. I can understand how you feel, Gary. Others have felt the same way. And I'm using Phil felt found in a very elementary way here. But what we found out is if you look at it like this, or if you take action towards our worry-free listing program or our home buyer advantage program or our love it or leave it guarantee, it's going to do all of this stuff for you. Right. And so, you know, being able to help them, um, you know, not do the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. That's insanity. And Gary is giving you the actual tactic to lower that valid conversation to appointment ratio. I told you what needs to happen and he told you how it gets done, <laughs> you know? So, so I love that, you know? And so if, you know, for me, call volume matters because I want to know how much data and dirt we're moving. Contact, uh, contacts, your contact rate, Okay, contact rates have been dropping over the last couple of years, and we know why. And you guys need to go read Conversion Code by Chris Smith and look at some of his visuals and stuff like that. I thought maybe I could even show some of that today, but I'm not going to get into it. That's a whole hour on itself, just that one segment. Okay, but valid conversations to appointment rates matter. But here's what I'm going to tell you. Quad scripting, Gary, how much, how much more did you want to actually show them? Did I? Uh, on that, uh, no, that's it. Okay, I, so I just I just came back from getting water. I don't know where the hell he was at in the process, but okay. Uh, the the quad so from the valid conversation to the appointment, there's four things that need to happen. I call it quad scripting, <clears throat> and I'm gonna give you guys a closing formula too. So there's four things that need to happen. Like we need to be setting up a pre-approved uh, mini uh, application with our lender, and we used to extract social security numbers and everything, and start that process. First, just transferring a name or a number or whatever to our lender, because then it's like, did, did, did you ask the lender, did you get a hold of them? They're like, no, I called them. And then it's like, well, shit, they really want to talk to you. Then you're following back up with the prospect. And there's just a lot of rework, right? Versus if you send them the link and you walk them through the application page, or if you extract, hey, how much money do you make? What is your current address? What is your date of birth? Like, like if people start giving you pertinent, valuable information, they're going to answer when that lender calls, right? So you can qualify these people even though you're not running their credit score or anything like that but i don't like using words like pre-approved or pre-qualified or any of these sticky industry words the consumer doesn't give a shit about any of that you know what they care about what their credit score is right it's like 
you know, you know, because everybody's gonna say, I'm just looking, I'm, you know, not in the market to buy a home. The website forced register me, I'm five years out, whatever. You need to tie an anchor. So I'm gonna give you the intro and walk you guys through this. You know what, like, hey, this is Adam. I just wanted to reach out to you. I saw you created an account with us. It's more than a website. I personally wanted to say thank you for that. It's a pattern interrupt with a pause. They're gonna be like, oh, okay, well, you're welcome. And, you know, I didn't know if I could answer any questions you may have, or if there's anything I could do for you in real estate right now. And they're always going to say, just looking, not in the market to buy a home. The same, I don't know if you guys are, uh, this is where internet leads. I'm yeah, giving you right here, internet leads, the same shit. And it's, it's because they're used to giving you the Heisman, or it's going to take the wind out of your cell or whatever. Most people don't know what to do. This is when we tie an anchor around it and we actually embrace it. And then we pivot to value with good tone and good pitch. Fantastic, James. Most people are just looking just like yourself. You're right where you need to be, right? And so their guard is gonna drop and they're like, what, what do you mean? I just told this person I'm not looking, not gonna buy, right? Because they're not gonna be honest with you right off the bat or anything like that. However, James, here's what I could do for you today. I can customize this site because it's more than a website, it's a communication tool. I work here in the client care department. I work here in the resource center. And these are like, these are terms, even as an agent, you need to be using, right? Because most people don't want to speak to an agent at, that has commission breath right now, but they do want resources. They do want to be served, okay? And so here's what I can do for you today. Pivot to value. Customize this to fit your specific need, price range, air of town, bedrooms, whatever it may be. So when the new homes hit the market, not just our listings, every single listing tied into our MLS will be sent to you in real life time because you've been watching the market, right? Great. It's competitive. I hate for you to miss a good deal. Or you're not going to have to re-repeat yourself to any other agent because all of the listings are here with our resource center, right? And I can answer any questions you have. Um, I can set up private showings. We could do it all right here, right? And then you're going through location, price. Spot checking motivation. How do you spot check motivation? Because if I can figure out their motivation and time frame, I have them eating out of my hand. Normally, I have a wand sitting on my desk, and you can call this cheesy and you can call it whatever, but I'm looking for time frame, motivation, pain points, pleasure points. And you guys are taking notes when you're on the phone, right? And then you take all these notes and you don't make an offer back to them. You put all the notes in the CRM and you tell them you want to follow up with them. Nobody wants to be followed up with. And then you're just sitting there doing $12 an hour data management for what? To make your team lead happy or you happy because you have notes in there. No, we need to make offers. And here's what I mean by that. When you're writing down these key words, there's key words that they're telling you that they're writing, that you're writing down, even though you're using sentences, okay? So when they're telling you location, price, and you get to motivation, a magic wand. Hey, if you had a magic wand, how soon would you like to be in your next home? They're going to say, it's going to be 12 months or yesterday or six months. They will always giggle and laugh, but they always tell you the time frame. Hey, if you had a magic wand, how soon would you like to sell this house? If you had a magic wand, how soon would you like to have your keys in hand and walking through that, 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 that door to your brand new house? They're going to tell you. Most people don't know how to get motivation, but if you use that magic wand in my call center, I had a call center open uh, 12 hours a day, three different shifts. We had wands like the little kid, you know, pink, purple ones setting on every single desk. Because you can call it cheesy. I heard it from Sean Kokos, the, like way back in the days, like when I first got in real estate. And I was like, man, that is slick, a magic wand. And I started using it because I, I had nothing but time. Like I wanted it as bad as I was gonna, wanting to breathe. I'm willing to try anything. I didn't care about my ego at that time or image or whatever. These people, I'm like, they're never going to see me anyways. Right. So it's like, I might as well try anything. So I'd be damned if I started saying magic wand and they start saying, I wish I could have bought two months ago. I wish I could have bought six months ago. And I'm not talking about just this market. I'm talking about the market when it was actually a buyer's market. And I looked at 40, 50, 60 homes and still wouldn't make a decision, not the seller's market that we've been in, right? And so then I said, this magic wand works. And then you need to follow it up with this. What needs to happen within that six months? They will tell you what needs to happen. I'm cleaning up a credit score. I'm trying to pay off my um, car, um, you know, I'm waiting for the kids to graduate and we're going to be empty nesters and we're heading to Florida. We're getting the hell out of Atlanta, 
right? What it, like they're going to tell you. So then you have those two things. Then you can get in alignment with that in terms of your data management. And so a we're, we're with the quad scripting, right? We're doing strategic customization of the of the actual account for 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 social behavior follow up and not just follow up to follow up with, but we'll talk about that optimized follow up in a minute. The mini pre approval attempt that I just talked about. And the best way to get them started with the lender, don't say lender, don't say pre-qualified, don't say anything about any of that stuff. Say, you know, when you get to customizing price range, location, like, you know, if they're working with another agent, what other amenities do they like in the home? You know, so you can send them relevant homes. I don't want to bust your bubble, but on the buying side, they don't shop for agents, they shop for homes. And so if you're not sending them very rele re relevant homes they're going to opt out right and you want to you know still send them homes that match their criteria and that's how they're going to come back to you right but when you get to price range and amenities how did you come up with that well i don't know this is this well hey do you by chance do you know your credit score and then they're going to say no well we can let you know that in a day or a matter of minutes or whatever your brand promise is with your lender and it's one of our free services by having an account with our client care center. We can let you know that it's going to affect your buying power, you know, and it's no obligation. You don't have to buy through us or anything like that. But if you'd like to know it, I can get that to you. Is it something that you would like? Would you like to know your credit score in a matter of X, Y, Z tied back to a home buyer advantage program or something? And it's part of the client care resource package. A lot of people are going to start that process. And then it's up to your lender to earn that business, right? And you're not saying anything about lender. I'm going to get you over to my partner in the client care center that specializes in credit, right? Like all of this stuff. And then also, do you know your debt to income ratio? That's another one. When they get into payments or this or that, well, do you know your debt to income ratio? No, what is that? Oh my God, that is really going to affect your buying power. Like, like, do you own, like you own a car, you own this? Oh, wow. You need to figure this percentage out. Hey, James, I have uh, some good news. Um, you know, part of your account with us, with the resource center is we can let you know your debt to income ratio for free. And, you know, a matter of probably like four or five hours, no obligation, none of that stuff. You, would you like me to get that information over to you? Cool. Like when they're doing loan calculations on the website or printing flyers or any of these things, these things are a way to position value, to be creative, to get them things that they want, right? And you also want to create some doubt. It's like, you might not be able to afford that with taxes, insurance, the shift, like everything. It's like, but we, we, if what you've seen on these loan calculators, that's not taking into account your credit score, debt to income ratio. And so it's like, you need to figure that out. You know, where you're going to find that information out. Well, oh, here's what I can tell you. I have some good news, right? And position it like that. And they will eat that stuff up. You know, one of the things that we specialize is in is working with people that, you know, have lower end credit like you do. And so anyways, if I could show you how to boost your credit to put you in a position to buy, you know, would that be worth a few minutes of your time to actually speak with my other partner? I just used the closing formula on you guys. And I want you to write this down. One of the things I specialize is in, and it, I've been using this and I learned it from a multi-million dollar copywriter when I was 24 years old selling insurance. And I've been perfecting this ever since then. One of the things that I specialize in is, and then draw a big line. Anyways, if I could show you how to draw another big line, is that going to be worth a few minutes of your time? If you guys take the law of reciprocity, and if you take selling homes seriously, and you take a work ethic, and how you apply yourself seriously with this closing formula, then you guys are single agents, you're going to make a lot of money. You're going to get in front of people at least. Love it, man. No, hold on. Let me let me tell them how to use this paragraph because it's like the paragraph is a formula. So it's like, why, why draw lines, right? So one of the things we specialize in is, in is, right? When you're taking all these notes and I call it pain boxes. We have pain boxes or pleasure boxes. When you're writing down these keywords, it's kind of like Google. When you go to Google and you type in Google, whatever you type in, you want it to pull back what? A keyword or two that you typed in the sentence and something very specific that you're looking for. And so what goes in the top part is their keywords and their natural language. I'm actually probably going to be coaching on this at EXPCon 
Dave asked me, he caught some of this stuff um, with another group that I did that was specific just to ISA stuff. I know we're kind of all over the place and I want to end with agent attraction. But one of the things I specialize in is whatever the hell they're trying to accomplish. And they've given you their natural language. They've given you their keywords. They've give, given it to you. So basically you're echoing it back to them. One of the things that I specialize in is working with Atlanta team leaders that's trying to scale a modern team. You know, anyways, James, if I could show you how your people could actually set some more appointments or uh, attract some more agents, would you let me talk for an hour? Would that be worth a few minutes of your guys' time, right? Yeah. So always plug in. One of the things I specialize in is what they're, 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 you have that language from them. Now, here's where it gets creative. Anyways, I know we've been on the phone for a few minutes. If I could show you how to what gets what you need to put in this line and you can rewrite it what are they going to experience and what are they going to gain or what are they going to net if they take you up on your offer and they're going to take you up on the offer if you understand time frame motivation what needs to happen goals targets hurdles like like if you understand that you, like it might take some time to be able to be able to position it cuz you don't always use it right the pre-approval attempt, customizing the home hunter alert, and then actually going for a close with the buyer or listing appointment. That's the four things, the quad scripting that I'm getting at, but I'm giving you the closing formula. So when you get to the bottom of, you know, customizing their home hunter alert, going through location, price, spot check and motivation, if they're going to need a mortgage, be paying cash, working with another agent, then you're going to know at this very time if you can close. You know, one of the things I specialize in is working with first time homeowners, just like yourself. Hey, I know you said you're about six or seven, eight months out, but anyways, you know, if I could show you how to um, secure a good deal, look after your best interest, if, you know, attempt to get as much, you know, weighted in your favor as I can with our, um, you know, home buyer advantage program, would that be worth a few minutes of your time? Well, what the hell is a home buyer advantage program? Man, I have to go, but one of our expert listing agents, or I can explain this to you in person or a Zoom meeting, but here's what I can tell you. If you end up buying a home through us, and you absolutely don't love it, we'll turn around and sell it for free within the first six months. Would you say that's fair enough to actually meet with one of our other agents to see what the other nine benefits are? There's nine more, right? And so then they're like, yeah. And, and so we have people sign up for those things. And just like with the worry free listing they, you know, stuff and you know, we market flexible commission, but value unarticulated is value unappreciated. But I promise you guys, value is never ever a, like, like it, like, Cost, like cost is never an issue in the presence of value. Like, so when people see our flexible commission, they hit us up and they think we're flexing down or some of our partners, when they run our worry-free listing program, they're like, man, I'm gonna have to cut my commission. No, the way we structure it, you're never gonna have to do it, but maybe 3% of the time, but you're gonna get 7% over 6% people because of the value that you're gonna provide and how you're gonna package it and present it. Right. And so um, we went a lot of, you know, like, you know, 7%, you know, deals over 6%, all because of how we packaged our worry free listing program, how we positioned it, you know, and, and, you know, there's a lot of uh, perceived value and tangible value in there. But, you know, if you can, you know, use that in your closing formula, like Gary, one of the things I specialize is in is working with people just like you in XYZ neighborhood that have beards and are getting older, just like yourself. <laughs> Anyways, if I could show you how to, you know, get that thing sold fast for the most amount of money with our worry-free listing program, and you can shave that beard and move on with your life, and, and it's amazing, would that be worth a few minutes of your time? And then he's gonna be like, what's in the worry-free deal? And then I give him one hook and close back, and then remind him why he needs to sell time frame, motivation, starting process, hassle-free, risk-free, like all of this stuff, right? One of the things I specialize in is helping single agents just like yourself really explode and expand their business. Anyways, if I could show you how to start closing two to three more houses a month, would that be worth a few minutes of your time to start coaching with me? And, you know, by the way, I normally charge $2,000. So you're going to pay Visa or MasterCard. It's my joke, right? Because we, I'm not, I don't charge them, right? And so then, like, they know you know your stuff. You're closing, and then you're asking for different things. Like the lady that I was helping, you know, she, she's like, I thought you were gonna ask me, 
you know, eventually for my credit card. And she just got out of the hospital and some other things. I told you like, and it was due to stress, not having systems and she's a hustler. And then um, she's like, I'm just so thankful that you're real, that you're like, you're not really wanting something. And she's like, told me, I feel like God put you in my life because you're going to help me build these systems and not just sell 50 homes a year and kill myself, but build a legit business. And she was with the XP before. And I told her right message, right time. And she's like, I was so fearful that you and I got in alignment and we, we, we hit it off on like that fourth call. It was our fourth call. And I told Gary, I said, she's coming with us. I said, I, I got her. And I, and I told Gary that, didn't I, Gary? And then she mm-hmm. felt it too, but she thought I was going to ask for something when this woman, all she needed is help. And now do you not like think that we're that much committed to each other? And I hit her with a closing paragraph when I got off the call with her, with her open mind and all that. And I joked around with her about the visa stuff. It has a different feel. It's positioned different, but I guarantee I'm getting the result that we're all after. Right. And so use that, 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 you know, even how you invite people, you know, if I could get you to, you know, come to one of our masterminds, you know, would you be willing to accept my invitation? If I could, would you as a powerful close too? You know, if I could send out, you know, one of our expert buyer agents, or if I could come out or we could hop on Zoom where I could go over our home buyer advantage program, love it or leave a guarantee, you know, would that be worth a few minutes of your time? You know, would you accept my invitation? Because I got to go. A lot of people don't follow a core process, intro, offer, structure, call. And then, you know, with the quad scripting, are we following up with them? And then what are we following up with? Not a follow up because of tasks. You want to be following up because of buying behavior and activity on the website. And so I gave you guys a formula. I gave you a few things. I'd want to wrap it up with any agent attraction calls unless Gary wants to, you know, or I say value. Adam, um, Daniel has a Daniel has a question here that he put just put in the chat, um, and he's asking, "Do you have a one sheet with all of your clear offers, USPs to agents, so that it can be altered with um, agents' needs?" Um, like, are you talking about for the network? Are you talking about for your team? Help me understand. Like, I'm I'm basically talking about. To, for agent attraction, since you're gonna you're gonna end with that a little bit, do you do you have like a one sheet thing that you kind of send out? Like I do it for sellers, you know, uh, guaranteed this nine ninety uh, for sub owner options and, and assistance programs. Mm-hmm. I do all these different things with them, but I don't really have a sheet of guarantees of what we're gonna do. You know, funnel building. Um, you know, done guys, for you. guys, 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 Look. guys, stop right now. You, here's here's where most of us get caught up and I find myself in it and I have to remind my group we are in real estate and so you are trying to become a publishing company right now to compete with the coaching companies that are coming in here and making all these promises and doing all this shit for the agent Jay Kinder and me used to compete head to head and me and Jay Kinder have been friends for 10 years I'm gonna give you a backstory and then I'll give you what I think you should do <clears throat> Um, Jay Kidner and Michael Reese are my good friends, but I found myself competing with them. Some business I got, some people they got off of me with these packaged offers. However, they have never built a real estate brokerage or a company like I have, but I've never built a coaching or publishing company like they have, right? Two different, two different, two different business models, right? And so that coaching company that they rolled in was $10 million coaching company. I bought myself out from $385,000 and rebuilt from scratch. And so I have to keep the main thing, the main thing. Is that going to help you sell more houses? Does that articulate the message to the person that you're trying to like attract? Like we're going to sell more houses because of this, or you want it to, to compare to, we'll just say, Mike Sherrard in Canada, like is running coaching and did like a lot of us, I run like coaching, right? But I was never a coaching company. I had to coach my people. I had to, I had to do things, but here's what I will tell you. We do things differently in top agent experts than what's in the cloud. Okay. But I don't take it and market it per se. And, and here's why it's because I want to get in business with very like-minded people. And if you're going to go and get in business with someone else, because they have another like sell with another like offer or done for you stuff, you're going to leave for me for the same reason that you came here. And it's like, what, it's like, what, what are we going to be able to build together? And so I do think that you have to, you know, 
like it, for your team, I think that that's different. Like with your team, even what we're facing up in Canada, you have to, what do we call it? Bake in what you're like, Gary likes to call it done for you. Like this is done for you. Right. And, and, but when you start getting into done for you in the network, what's that cost? What is the overhead? And when you're talking about some of these people that have 10,000 agents, I have 2,500 agents. I made, I made a million and it's like, I'm profitable. But then you start doing all these things. When does it end? And then how much business are you really getting because of it? And, I, and this is one of the biggest things that I face in EXP. And it's like, I have to remind people, I'm not a coaching company. I sell houses and I'm not a publishing company. And so you have to ask yourself, do you want to get into the training space? And then you want to differentiate through a package through training, or do you want to be known for building a brand for building a traditional team, a modern team and selling a shit ton of homes? Because here's what I just told a gentleman up in Toronto. He's like, how are you building up here? And we're doing certain things. I took this kid and he walked away from his father from Remax with 40 listings and he was 25 years old. His dad said, you're effing stupid and you're making a horrible decision and all of this stuff two years ago. His son continued to grow with us. And his dad said, you're going to be back. Mark my words. And it created some family issues. And his son it struggled with it because it, like, they're loyal. They're a great family. But Michael continued to grow. And his dad eventually said, who the hell are you working with over there? What are you doing? And then finally, he got introduced to me. Gerbic flew into Vegas, met Brent Gove and other people. And when I sat at that table with him and I had a beer with that gentleman, and I haven't had a beer in like, 200 and some days, he didn't ask me one question to see anything on a comparison to a sheet to Kinder or what Mike Sherrard was doing in Canada, because he's a, he was a top agent in Canada. He wanted to know about me as a human being, what my decision-making process was like, what I've been doing for his son, what I've done for my real estate business, right? And so I think with your team, you got to have an olive cart, like option one, option two, option three. Everything you're talking about, I agree, and that needs to be packaged, it needs to be pretty, it needs to, the math needs to make sense, and they need to have options within the team. When you're talking about the network, I think it gets tricky, and I think it gets slippery, and I think that you, I could be wrong, but I find that most people end up doing it because they want to keep up with the Joneses or the coaching companies in this organization, and I get business from them coaching companies because they're running podcasts, they're shooting content, they're writing the next like YouTube shit, right? It's like Gary just showed you he's really coaching ISAs. He's really, you know, tracking where the appointment's going. Like, I'm, like we're really in the trenches. And so sometimes I think people blur them lines and hopefully I could differentiate it for you. But here's what I can tell you. I can't answer that for you. That's something personal you got to answer for yourself. If you ask me, Gary would probably like if we had some people in my network would like that I have some. But if you ask me what we're doing at Top Agent Experts, we do a bunch of shit and we add a lot of value. I don't take it and market it. However, if I feel like we're genuine and you're looking at EXP, but you're not shopping, like if I feel like you're shopping, I'll be like, go, like just go, go over there then because you're going to be drama. You're just be shopping on value. You're not shopping on like the person you're getting in relationship with, with business is a very intimate thing. If you ask me, because like, I think that the people I'm in business with, I gotta, I gotta get to know their kids. I gotta know their problems. You know, I gotta know their financial situations. And it's like, we're in this for the long haul. You know what I mean? And so we can always create a sheet. We always could do those things together. We always could come to those agreements, but um, I don't, I've never used it in terms of marketing to attract people, I guess is the best way of putting it, but there's no right or wrong answer. There's just not. Yeah. Everybody definitely has their own approaches and there's definitely not a right or wrong answer, but what you got to look at is which approach is more sustainable. Right. And, you know, when I first came in, you know, I looked at, you know, the, the kind of the flow, the process um, and I see kind of that foundation kind of changes as well, but what works for me and it's very sustainable is coming from a posture, a contribution that is very sustainable, right? Because everybody has pain points. Everybody has goals, ambitions, right? And, you know, if you talk to a buyer seller, same thing, posture contribution. If you're talking to an agent for agent attraction is posture contribution. What can we do for you and do with you to help you in your now, your current disposition and in your future disposition, 
Okay. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I okay, found. Okay, so, okay, so yeah. now, so now, Gary, I want you to segue into what yep, you built. Yep, yep, what you yep, built. Yep, and so yep. this is the ultimate thing that will blow that out of the water. And so that I wanted you to think first. And then Gary hit the nail on the head and he's going to show you because then you can send it to them in real live time and it's not a flyer. Yeah, so so what we do, and then I can answer any questions. Okay. Everything starts with a vision, right? And so I can't express this enough. If you don't have metrics, you don't have a flow, you don't have a process, and you're just doing random business in any area of business that you're doing, agent traction or buyers and sellers, you're going to get random results. You got to build a sustainable, repeatable, predictable system right? Would you guys all agree? That's profitable, right? Okay. So it all starts with a vision because everybody's approaches are different. You know, some people, when it comes to age attraction, they're really heavy on social media and that's okay. They do great, right? Some people are doing uh, cold calls. They're just calling a database. Some people are just calling SOI, the sphere of influence. So what we did here on one pillar, okay, this is a revenue pillar. Okay. So this is one way that we generate um, age of attraction is called smart setter. Okay. So smart setter is a third party that makes call for us and they do an intro call and uh, they set up an appointment for me. Okay. Which that calls intro call. Okay. So we give smart setter, let me back up a little bit. We give smart setter our avatar. This is what we're looking for. Okay. This is the type of agent we're looking for right now. We're uh, we're, uh, we're, we're trying to capture more market share in Canada. So this is market, this, this campaign is for Canada agents. Okay. So, and we're getting this dialed in. This is work in progress, but we're getting to a point now where we're starting to see the funnels grow and, and, and starting to move the chain a lot. Okay. So smart center sets the appointment. They send me a text message. It goes on my calendar. Okay. We also have it integrated, and I'll show you guys a quick glimpse of this. We could do a whole nother session on this if you guys want to, because there's a lot of information covered. So I'm just going to go from a 30,000 square foot level. Um, it goes on my calendar. It also goes into CRM Grow, which is a CRM we use. So when I get that set, I send them out a video through CRM Grow. It says, hey, you know, this is Gary. I, I just got a notification that we have a, a, a appointment set. I look forward to meeting you. I just want to put a face to the name. I look forward to hearing about your business and how we can help you with all your missed opportunities, right? Real short, boom. And it's, it's generic because I, I just don't have enough time today to try to send off one-off personalized videos so everybody's being booked. Okay, so Smart Setter sets the appointment. Um, they give me a text message. I have the intro call, okay? Here at this point. I have the intro call. And then, so we have to think about if they show up to the intro call, this is what's going to happen. If they don't show up to the intro call, this is what's going to happen. So this is kind of how our flow works, right? So no show, you know, they get in CRM grow, they get put into disposition. Our VA, Sarah, who does a great job, uh, she calls to reschedule them and reschedules uh, the intro call, which the intro call is about a 10 to 15 minute call just to do an introduction with who I am. It goes something like this. Hey, this is Gary Gray with Adam Bailey's Listing Network. I'm a partner with Adam. Hey, I appreciate you taking the time to meet with me. And then I get into the qualifying questions. How's business? Do you work with buyers or sellers? How long you been in real estate? Are you on track to um, hit your goals? You know, what kind of business did you do last year? Do you generate your own leads? Or do you just have a sphere of influence, SOI? What type of technology do you have, okay? Why am I asking these questions? Because I'm trying to position them of what their business looks like, right? And while I'm positioning them what their business looks like, guess what? That Intel is giving me their pain points, right? So then it's like, okay, well, you're dealing mostly with buyers. You did six deals. Um, so those six deals, did your company give you those leads or did you generate those yourself, right? And so then I get into the pain points. Well, okay, mostly buyers. Do you do? Do you want to work with sellers? Yes, I would love to work with sellers. Okay, great. So I'm taking that information down, right? So then after I gather the intel, well, hey, you know what? Thank you for sharing all this information with me. Um, sounds like you got a, a pretty good model going. However, it sounds like 
you're dealing most with the buyers, but you love to work more with sellers. And then you also want to learn more about marketing. Is that correct? And they would say, yeah, absolutely. Well, awesome. That's what we specialize in. My business partner, Adam, you know, uh, Edify Adam, right? And then I say, hey, you know, what I'd like to do is set up a Zoom appointment for the next step, which is a discovery call. It's, it's going to be on the computer. So commit to being on the computer. Can you do that? Yes, I can. And, you know, if I have time, I'll try to get Adam on the phone to introduce him, say, hey, you know, let me see if Adam has a few minutes uh, just to say hi to you, but you'll get to meet him at the discovery call if he doesn't pick up, you know, and Adam picks up. Hey, how you doing, Joe? Uh, you know, look forward to meeting you. Hangs up. I said, and then we just set the next appointment. In that next appointment, the expectation there is to go over those pain points and to talk about how can we be a immediate solution and a long-term solution. If you have an agent that's only did three deals in a year, are you going to talk about revenue share? Are you going to talk about these other pillars? Are you going to talk about icon agent and try to build on that? No, you're going to talk about how are you going to get that next deal? Where's your next deal going to come from? Where's that next listing going to come from? How are we going to compound that listing with circle prospecting and get you more deals? How are we going to get you from six to seven or seven to eight to go through the stages of real estate? Now, now that you're, you're speaking their language and see where the disconnect is, too many people try to sell our model and sell things that don't pertain to that disposition of that agent. Imagine yourself going into Nordstrom's or any other retail store, and I'm going in there in my mind, I'm trying to buy a pair of shoes. Salesperson comes up to me and says, hey, how you doing? You know, um, hey, I got this great suit over here, just went on sale. You want to take a look at it? In my mind, I'm like, no, thank you. I'm just looking. Hey, I got this great tie over here. You know, the shirt and tie combination, then I'll sell. You want to take a look at it? No, thank you. I'm looking for shoes, right? So it's the same thing. we got to line up our benefits with their pain points. So it has to be a compelling value proposition. Does that make sense? Okay. So now, Dan, you asked a question about what you should be sending out. Now, that's kind of, that's real, real, um, that's a gamble because you have to understand your audience before you send out content. It's like, if I send out generic buyer information and say the information I'm sending out is for first time home buyers, but I'm sending that information out to investors, is that gonna be compelling to that investor? What I'm trying to sell on a first time home buyer? Absolutely not, because there are two different profiles, right? So the first thing you gotta do, if you build a database, you understand the profile, then you can send out content, okay? So we do this here. So I'm gonna get into that here in a second. So after the intro call, we have the discovery call. Adam and I are on the phone, we have notes. I go over the notes, I get Adam up to speed, say, hey, Adam, this is Joe. He's been in business for about five years. Last year, he did six deals. His pain points, you know, he's, you know, he wants to do more listings. Right now, he's not getting a lot of referrals. Business started to slow down. He's at, he's at Remax. You know, which I call Femax because the fees are high, um, and so we're looking at you know long term. Um, you know, I, I I'm telling him how you know he has potential to become an icon agent, and so we start crunching those numbers. We think the cost of doing business is going to decrease, and his ROI is going to increase. Right? You guys understand that? Those are key words that I use. Your cost of doing business is going to decrease, and your ROI is going to increase when you become an icon agent. Right. But you got to you got to sell that assumption and projection. And I'll talk about that here in a little bit anyway. So after that meeting, we put together deliverables. We put together customized information for marketing, for whatever it is. And we send it to these agents for free. Posture contribution. OK, so and then Adam sends out, you know, a thank you video. And then that's kind of where the cycle begins. So what I'm going to jump into real quick here is our pipeline. OK. So trust me, you know, we're just now figured this out to where we're, we're almost there, but it's been a grind because we had to figure out these dispositions. We had to figure out the culture up in Canada. So you guys can see my screen, right? Yeah. So this is a CRM grow. If you're going to take agent attraction serious, you have to have a CRM. Okay. You have to have a database, just like you do with buyers and sellers. Do not do this on a random piece of paper, sticky notes, tablets, and try to keep up with that, okay? Even if you just have 100 people, 
get a CRM. And it's not that, you know, I could send you guys the affiliate link. It's about hundred bucks a month. You guys can afford that, I'm sure. Okay, but it's very important. So this is the pipeline. And I'm gonna go through this real quick so you can understand the flow and the psychology behind it. Step one, these are all intro calls that are on my calendar and future dates that are pending. So I haven't talked to these people yet, okay? Number two, no show intro call. So these are people that were scheduled and they didn't show up, okay? So this bucket, Sarah goes through here, our VA, and she rescheduled these. And I'll show you some numbers on that, okay? Number three, had an intro call, but they didn't like what I had to say. I'm not interested or you know whatever the case may be, but it's in the notes, right? So here's another bucket. And what we do is we send them pertinent content based on why they're not interested. Like uh, Jeff Mountain here, Adam did a customized video and sent it to Jeff, right? Based on his needs and his questions and his objections, okay? This is how dialed in this is, okay? So this is content. Let's actually play a few minutes of that. This is what differentiates yep. playing yep. recorded video or um, just letting a lead fall through the cracks. So the intake form is huge. Gary knew about his business. We knew his numbers. We knew um, his limiting beliefs. We knew his blind spots and we knew what the holdup was to take the next step. Now, typically this would be what one of my presentations like would look like on like a weekly call or whatever. And so I was able to create this squeeze page in a matter of minutes and the content is um, specific to him and I could relate to him. And so I'm empathizing with him that I had the same limiting belief and it cost me a year and a half because I had a big ego. I was closing a thousand houses a year, but let me just put yourself in this situation. And if you heard something just like the beginning of this and, and how I position it. What's going on in the world today? What's up, Jeff? It's Adam Bailey. I know I was trying to catch up with you. You spoke with uh, Gary and uh, he had uh, forwarded me your email and uh, I read through it. Um, you know, I, I completely understand your, um, uh, your your initial response to this model. Um, I was an independent, um, you know, for eight years before I had looked at this model about three or four years ago, almost four years ago. And uh, it took me about a year and a half to get my mind wrapped around it uh, as well. Uh, you know, I was closing a thousand houses a year with about 20 people out of Wichita, Kansas, um, you know, do, doing very well from 2012 to 2017, I was ranked ninth to 12th in the nation, um, you know, bouncing around those spots um, and, and the team category in the Wall Street Journal across all brokerages and franchises and, and all of that stuff. However, I was looking for a solution um to keep expanding and to be able to collaborate uh and uh, drive revenue with other like-minded partners i also owned a coaching company um you know at the time showing people uh basically how we had set up our client care resource center our inside sales team how we were um uh, putting buyers and sellers through a longer cash conversion cycle than what real estate agents are used to uh, to be able to kick out quality um, appointments for our agents and our expansion team as well. So, um, you know, I completely understand, um, you know, how you're looking at it. You know, uh, others have felt the same way, uh, even myself. But, you know, what, what we've found is, just like I found for myself, and obviously the, what you're doing, you're watching videos, you're doing your research, you're continuously talking with us, um, you know, that uh, it, it's not that, right? Um, and so... I will uh, break down that being a myth and, um, and, and, and lay it all out there. We're in real estate. We sell houses. Uh, I closed 900 houses uh, last month, 900 houses on my network last month. And that was just the ones that I was paid on because people that are uncapped 100% uh, or uh, already in icon status, then, um, you know, it's just, it's just that. So I'm excited for them. And uh, that's what we're, this is why we're all here. Um, it's not necessarily because of the split. It's a, it's a, to be to be the most profitable and to build equity uh, in something. Not necessarily for myself. I had a few other partners, and you know we were you know we were doing well, right? And fast, so fast forward a little bit through that. Fast forward real quick, just a little bit through. Yeah. So this was, was his biggest concern. Five. Yeah. So just just be like so uh, if you guys and that was us being an independent, right? 
um, you know, and close. So pause it. So you guys, if you guys have seen this slide, right? Most of you guys have seen the slide, like just kind of, you know, go through the next slide where it shows the, you know, how it eliminates the uh, titled positions and we move the agent in front of the international company and the international company supports the agent with, you know, ownership, disruptive, you know, technology with Verbellum and, you know, revenue share, cause you are, you know, con you're basically uh, rewarded through your contribution, um, you know, and um, all of that stuff. And so he was worried about it being a network marketing type of scam or not necessarily that, but just focus too much on recruiting, right? And not selling houses. And so, if I'm on the phone with him and he moves to the third conversation with me, I would have had to knock this out anyways, right? And so Gary relays that information because we have those data points and boom, I build a quick message back to him. And in a, and in a timely response, I get a presentation out, but I, if you actually listen to me a little bit, I'm like, oh, I'm just working on some content here. I have some of these slides pulled up. So I'll just go over a couple of them with you real quick. And so he don't have to sit through an hour or 45 minutes or anything like that. It's like, let's get right to his um, issues. And then I'm using his name and he knows it was made specifically for him. And it's like, yeah, it might take 10 minutes. I want to get these calls out uh, or responses out under eight to 10 minutes. But it would have to happen if I get on a call. Then when I get on a call, I've already knocked that, um, you know, joining question or objection out. And so if somebody sent you something very personalized like this in a timely manner, do you think, uh, who, who asked me that question about the olive cart sheet? Um, you know, um, would this be more impactful? Dan who, was, who was that? What was that guy's Dan name? Daniel. Daniel, uh, what's your last name, sir? Clock filter. Clock filter. Okay. I, I like it, man. Yeah. So that's a good question. So I'm also going to talk about another, you know, situation, but it, it's like with, with that, that is like me talking straight to him wanting to sell more houses, a limiting belief. There's nothing that I could have shown him on a sheet that shows that we add more value than another network or another line to get him to actually join. Right now, let's say, his business, let's just go to another part of the material list. Let's just go to the ISA deal, guys. Um, and since you guys are here, just copy and paste that, uh, that ISA uh, call. The, um, just go, we'll do uh, that, the bottom one at the bottom. So, like, um, so, so this one right here, guys, uh, just copy and paste this link and we'll just drop in the chat box for you. So, this was a coaching company in Toronto, Canada. They're a tech and coaching company, and they hit me up because um, yeah, I coached some of their clients or whatever in the past, and they asked me to do some training. And so I've always documented everything that I've done, and then I had it sitting on my YouTube, and it went. I, you know, I don't do the keywords or any of that stuff to to push it, and then it went from 100 views to 200 to 400 to you know it's a it's at 600 because people are sharing it but then we put it when people are asking about script training isa core process and some of the stuff that i touched on with you guys today except to explain and it's just a whole hour specific to it we can fire this off in a text or an email we can create an opt-in page for it or we you know we can leave it open like it is here and we can see how long they watch the video for um, and, or if they watch it on mobile or their desktop, and then they can go in and schedule right back on the calendar. And so it goes back to the law of reciprocity. It's like, you have this problem, whether it could be, you know, ISA stuff or, you know, um, maybe hiring VAs or what, like whatever, like have videos that you are already, you know, doing in your business or you coached on and ran a meeting on or documented something from something like this. And then you compare it down to the best 15 minutes. And when somebody brings that up, hey, hey, check, check your uh, text message. I just sent you a video. Watch it and let me know like what, what else. And so by the time they leave that conversation with you, Daniel, they could have three different things that are very specific to what they're looking for than just a sheet, if that makes sense. Yeah, it definitely makes sense. One of the other things is to, that I was talking about with the funnels earlier was uh, once you have people in your organization, do you guys focus a lot on getting them? Uh, well, you're trying to probably get the get the better matches to your own your own work. But my one of my problems was I brought in several people that they just don't do very much production. So at the end of the day, 
I was trying to find ways to help them to produce so that they would stay around and stay in the business. That was part of the funnel building stuff. Yeah. So, so, you know, um, that's one of the reasons why you kind of pick your avatar, right? This is part of your, your kind of your agent attraction business plan. You pick your avatar because you got to understand that each disposition or profile of an agent is going to require some type of or level of coaching, training, and skill set, right? So if you're bringing in newer agents, then you got to understand that that sweat equity invested into that agent is going to be higher most of the time of an agent that's already self-sufficient and that's a kind of a, a D personality who's a driver, right? Because uh -huh. the newer agents, they're going to need daily contacts, massaging, hey, where do I go to do this? Well, how do I do this? So you got to kind of, you know, quote, unquote, um, manage them a little bit more on a higher frequency. So if that's your avatar and you know that, and that's okay, there's no right or wrong answer. That means you got to build your nest, your foundation around that profile, knowing that, hey, when they come in, I got to have a resource sheet that, you know, that we're sharing with you guys and building and doing all that. I got to have maybe, um, I got to expose them to uh, top agent experts where there's um, sessions or coaching sessions already in place for new agents. And then also put in your own culture where you may want to have a, a, a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, whatever hour session for new agents specifically because you know that profile oh. exists, right? So, so it's called it's called being proactive. How do I maximize the opportunities me, that I'm creating for let me, myself? Let me, right? And let me and let me give you one more hit uh, hack, real quick. <clears throat> During the level up series. I was recording because it's on YouTube. It wasn't just in the cloud. And so I went back. You guys know what the Level Up series is, right? That we did the initiative, um, you know, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. I monitored and would scan through the speakers and the content. And then I would record or stream live in my group the topics that was like awesome, right? But then I could build it in here and have it. Um, as part of my library or my training catalog. And so you don't necessarily need to be the trainer and you don't need to be the one curating the content. If you can document it, record, extract and organize and do different things. Because what most people felt, and I'm just gonna be honest, and I have to have this hard conversation sometimes you know, with Gary, cause he interfaces a lot with, we'll just say the bottom of the cookie jar, or it's like protecting Adam's time to keep me in higher leverage situations with other people. And, and so Gary finds himself empathizing with these people and it's like, well, we should do this or we should do that, but are they getting in the cloud? And so it's like, I, I have the calendar that reoccurs on my, 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 um, my exp calendar but then i run my, my my personal calendar and when i'm on calls with people and they're telling me well, hey well i have this problem or i want to learn this or why don't we do this in the group and i'm like um do you know what's coming up on thursday and they're like no i'm like well there's actually an icon person that is the expert and and they're like number two in their market and they're going to be training on that on thursday did you know about that and they'll be like no because everybody's starting to become programmed that their upline is their coaching company or the holy grail or it has all their answers. And I tell my people, we do a lot for you and we do more than most people in EXP. And I'm sure you, James and you guys all do a lot and you do what you can, right? However, you still need to be studying outside the industry, but it's not about the lack of resources. Tony Robbins says it best, it's typically not being resourcefulness, right? And so your job as a quarterback it might not be to present like Gary, go to top agent experts real quick. Like, uh, oh yeah, well, this is the resource. Like actually we'll talk, touch on this real quick. So this is the resource that gets them like, like the quarterback, like we're, you know, where their information is. So the team leaders to you, Daniel, it all trickles down and it don't have to be recreated and it'll take them to all the EXP stuff or take them to YouTube videos or the most commonly asked questions in our group for training or whatever, just like with the ISAs that we constantly hear, we put inside of a resource guide with that. Now, um, the weekend review, um, we streamed last night, me and Gary for an hour. And so, yes, you need to be training. Yes, you need to be going live. I train specific days every day of the week on Zoom, guaranteed like clockwork. I have other leaders that train on 
different things. Uh, Gary trains on different things, but somebody's always going to want something new or we should create something, right? And, but you got to think, is it in the cloud? Is it being trained on or has it been trained on? And guys, I, like, I don't know if you guys have ever used Loom before, but Loom is amazing. And so you can just click Loom and record really quick. You don't have to upload video, convert video. You can just send the link and they can watch it. They don't have to download. It's non-techy. But the cool part is if you're just in the cloud or you're on here, you could be creating a Loom on top of our Zoom and then you can download it out of the loom and then you could edit it and then piece me together in one of your libraries and i'm sure james will do something with this right because you want to repurpose things and so what i'm talking about we repurpose things for top agent experts we repurpose things for uh uh youtube and then even what i did with james i talked a little smack to james like not me and him like to have a little fun so people a lot of my team watches my storylines how i tell stories so i was posting the image like atlanta wants some smoke like, like this is a rival inside of EXP, but I respect these guys. And I like them. So we're going to bring it to Atlanta. Who is getting my team to maybe track it or create some interest, get some eyeballs on it. Right. And so I leverage some of his content. You guys can leverage mine. So repurpose things for all types of different platforms. And, but you don't have to be the creator or you don't have to reinvent the wheel, if that makes sense. Because if it's already been trained on and documented or it's coming up, you just got to cap capture it, put your logo on it and package it for, what do you guys call this group? What's this group called? Do you guys got a agent, movement? Agent what, builders. Is what is it? Agent builders. Agent builders. Oh yeah, the agent builders. And, and just start building your library, Dan. And so, <clears throat> You can't do everything on your own. And I don't know how well or how long you've been around. James can't do everything on his own. And so top agent experts, I tell people, they try to break off and do their own thing. I said, there's strength in numbers. So go build your own thing, but tie into something bigger that is decentralized with training, education, the, the, the actual drinking from the fire hose, if that makes sense. And so Gary, I'll let you take it back over from here, but hopefully that helped, Dan. Give, like, did, like, thank you through some of this stuff. Yeah, right. so you, you definitely wanna, um, you know, we coach in this all the time and I want you guys to write this down. Leverage what you have and what you have access to. Leverage what you have and what you have access to, okay? So if you have something, leverage it. But again, top agent experts, agent builders, leverage that as well. And I'm talking about people, you know, and I'm talking about material. Okay, so leverage all those things. I think that's one of the biggest things that that uh, we got to get all get better at. Hey, we, hey, man, we also got another rock star on here. Dan Hillsman's part of your group. What's up, Dan? Dan is on here still. Is Dan hey, part of yeah, Adam, I appreciate you hopping on for our group, man. That's awesome. And James, great job getting Adam on. <clears throat> and we're 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 heading directly in the direction of production, man. So you're nailing, you're speaking our jam right now, man. We really appreciate you. Thank you for your time. Yeah, man, I tried to bring a little bit, you know, of, of, of mix it all in because, you know, without production, none of this other stuff, you know, happens or matters. But I got a lot of respect for Dan. Um, so uh, that's awesome. I seen your chat pop up on here. And Dan, it's like I try to do as much as I can for people, but I turn down a lot of this stuff. I mean, you, I, I got a lot of respect for J James. I've spent some time with uh, uh, Levi. Uh, Levi is his name, right? Levi? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and so when they hit me up, well, actually, I kind of made maybe a promise at, uh, in Cabo or Puerto Rico, but, you know, hopefully you guys, you know, appreciated it. Um, and I'll, I'll let Gary kind of take the final questions. I've actually been talking for about four hours straight um, to get to this point. And so I'm going to catch my breath. But um, if you guys, um, you know, got any uh, uh, questions with any of the spreadsheets or like to recreate uh, then Gary, maybe you can even show our uh, revenue share spreadsheet real quick. And, you know, like we can maybe get you connected with our spreadsheet guy or, you know, work out a, work out a deal. Cause I'm about to release all these new spreadsheets to my network as well. Like my network hasn't even got them. Um, but uh, he's going to show you basically how we're taking uh, data from enterprise and populating it onto a spreadsheet. And some, Dan, you've probably seen, you know, the, you know, the, this before and things like this, but um, this is kind of the cool color coded, you know, version of it. Um, and I'm not going to get into every metric here, but, you know, obviously we took a hit in August and, you know, we're, 
we're back on we're back on track but then you go over to the summary page this is more of the numbers that power of the sheet um for what you'd be you know be looking at um and the numbers are staggering you know this like my 2500 you know people have been like built from 520 people only 22 percent has ever sponsored one agent and so when i saw a lot more yeses um or uh, not a lot more yeses it seemed like it was about 60 40 on this call that was inspiring but it makes sense if this is an agent attraction call um and so i thought what somebody was going to ask me earlier like when you bring someone on do you immediately have them start attracting or you know like you know, like when do they start recruiting it's like are you going to be in real estate in a year from now can you sell homes right like do you have a predictable business and so make that the main thing because it's easier to retain an agent and have a producing agent than to have them fall out or broker hop or get out of the business and then to replace that person. So Gary, I'll let you finish it from here. Yeah, yeah. So we won't dive into this, um, but we can share it or we can set up another one. Uh, this goes into detail, um, you know, goes into, you know, 21, 22% uh, hired, you know, one to four agents like Ads was talking about. And then here's all the different countries, um, active versus inactives. Um, so our, you know, our metrics guy, um, he, he's a beast. So Hold on. Any, anything that we do, you have to have metrics, right? And so that's why we have all these data tables. We, we don't do it for uh, micromanaging. We do it so we can get better, right? So you guys got to look at that. You know, we, we, we collect data to get better. We collect data so we could be proactive and, and take more initiative. We take data because we want to increase our performance and increase our skill set. We take data because it's all about production, the bottom line, because numbers don't lie, right? So I got I want you guys to write down this. The th I call it the P3. This is what my formula has been here, especially since the market has shifted, right? So this is a takeaway. P3, being more proactive, taking more initiative, okay? Work on your performance, your skill set. If you're doing business the same way now in agent attraction or with buyers or sellers, you're going to have a rude awakening, right? Because there's no more low hanging fruit. Okay. So, skill set and then production. Follow your numbers. If you got to double down making calls, make it happen. If you got to call more agents, make it happen. If you got to manage your time better, make it happen because it's all about the three P's, right? And so, we coach on this real heavy because of the fact that where we're at, okay? So, and then here's a common denominator for both agent attraction. And this is just takeaways because I got to wrap this up and get going. This is a, a takeaway for both divisions, agent attraction, buyers and sellers. Make sure you guys are coming from a posture contribution where mm. you're having people buy in to what your offer is because it's a compelling value proposition, okay? It has to be a compelling value proposition. I think I got that somewhere here. Um, if I don't, I apologize right here. Okay. So write this down. Understanding a compelling value propositions requires you to understand your audience's profile. I don't care if you're doing buyers or sellers, if you're doing agent attraction, you got to understand your audience. And that's by asking more questions. That's by, you know, engaging. Understand what, did I, what did I do to kick this thing off? Right, exactly. Okay, so understanding compelling, and this is what I close with, understanding a compelling value proposition gets you an exchange for opt-in with your target audience. They're going to opt-in to what you're offering because you got something compelling that they want. This applies in everything you do in real estate, agent attraction, buyers or sellers, okay? And I gave an example, like for instance, I said this earlier, first time home buyers, they have a different needs and wants than an investment buyer. Every agent has this different needs at once. It's up to you to ask the qualifying questions and get to know that agent's pain points by asking questions. If you're doing most of the talking when you're talking to agents, you're not asking enough questions and getting them engaged, you're going to fail. The best people that build relationships ask a lot of questions. They get engaged. Would you guys agree? Yes. We're, no. Most agents make mistakes. Hey, hey, hey Gary, help me yeah. understand that. Okay, we're most. Oh, agents... I'm just kidding. So that's yeah, yeah, yeah. so when yeah, people okay. say, 
So when people say that, they, even though you know how, what to respond, like be yeah. clear because people could say, oh, a little bit or a lot or be vague, right? Say, like, well, help me understand what that means, you know? Right, right, so, exactly, like, so exactly. Yeah, so tell yeah, yeah, tell me more. Yeah, yeah, tell me more about that. What does that hey, mean? Hey, tell Gary, me I, know, I know you got to jump on another call. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. just, I'm going to flash a few books um, that I read over this last yeah. year and a half that- um, I got to go, you guys. He's got, nice. he's got calls right, here. So right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you guys, uh, I'm going to flash a few books that um, I've read over the last year and a half, maybe two years um, that uh, I did with my team and they were impactful. But if you guys can, it's like, if you would like to hear me at EXPCon speak, um, I've been on the fence and, you know, with it. And then I told uh, Dave, the ISA stuff, I'd be willing, you know, to potentially do it. But if you can make a post on Facebook, you know, create some content, tag me on maybe what was your favorite line or the favorite, your favorite principle or whatever. And then I'll give you, you know, you know, some juice back, you know? And so like agents are watching other agents and they want to see that they're running with other winners. And so tag me, I run an open Facebook page. What was your favorite quote from Gary, myself, principle what did we give you to think about whatever because other people are having a bad day other people are in a slump other people are fearful and they don't know where their next deal is coming from and if they see that you're winning and you're having fun and that's who people want to be around inspiring people now the, the the this book right here i would get ted talk talk like ted all right and the reason I talk about this is because Brian Carruthers uh, is what, you know, taught, you know, a lot of us building an empire and all that stuff. But, you know, Brian said, Adam, you need to do certain things outside of Brent and outside of the system that I was following. And I'm like, no, it's working. I'm growing by six, seven percent profitability and agent count. I stick and I still stick to it. Brian said the person that is speaking is normally the one making the most amount of money. And it's fair to say, I don't know where Dan's at or, you know, where James is at or some of you guys, but we're here talking about revenue share. And it's safe to say that I'm probably making the most amount of money off revenue share, right? And so whatever topic that you guys are trying to evolve into, like go all in with it, be radical with consuming it, but it's okay to start presenting and, and look stupid. I'm not the best speaker. I got some country grammar here from Kansas, right? First person to graduate high school. However, you feel my passion, right? And this is a, a, a quote that I love and Brian Carruthers, you know, got me, you know, you know, onto this book, you know, and it's like, you've got to follow your passion. You've got to figure out what it is that you love and who you really are. Like once I was no longer ashamed where I came from because I used to hide, you know, my, my parents' financial situation or the drinking or the drug abuse or all of the other things that I went through. And I had the courage to, to really own that and make it part of what I told you, you need to create, you need to create your story. Because I also had to quit drinking. Uh, I didn't have to quit, but I chose to quit drinking for a, a year. And then I'll see where it's going. And it's just what I just turned 40. And I'll, I'll be honest with you guys. I got a DUI about a year and a half ago. And then my father was passing away from COVID and did pass away within 30 days. I was just in a bad spot. And so I chose to not drink, but I documented it on the internet. Because I do the hard 75 and I'm transparent on the internet. And when I showed up to the build event, I had so many people pull me to a side and ask me how I did it, how I'm around all these people partying and celebrating and I'm, and I'm not drinking. And I looked at every single one of them in the eyes and I said, I'm committed. I don't give a shit what anyone else is doing. I know who I am and I know what I need to do for me. And once you make that commitment, everything else changes in your life. But you have to become comfortable with speaking. You have to become comfortable on video, whether you think you sound great or you look good or not. I, I hate to tell you this, but you sound the way you sound and you look the way that you look. So you might as well make the best of it, right? It's like, that's it. Fanatical prospecting. You're never going to build a buyer and a seller business or any other traditional team or modern team if you are not fanatically prospecting. And I don't care even if you're running uh, radio ads and have the best inbound marketing, you're still going to have to prospect. This book right here is big with my people. Building your story and making it part of your brand. The Adam Bailey Listing Network 
is the actual brand and people know it. And I built it out under Mike Gerbic and Select Homes because I started telling my story and I started embracing it and I quit living in the shadow of other people, right? This right here is huge in terms of what we're doing at EXP. And this book right here, I would buy this one in terms of imagining it forward and what like thought leadership is about and how, um, how it comes about, how you manage through it, and then how you leverage it. How do you leverage the momentum right now with EXP? And how do you get other people to start to imagine seeing their self in this picture as well? Because once people can start to experience it, once they can start to see their self in it, just like buying or selling a home, they get emotionally wrapped up in it and you can make it contagious. So when, I, when people are like, you create a buzz, Adam, around you, around your camp, but I don't see a lot of marketing. I don't see a lot of offers out in the public. And this book right here is fundamentally what I teach my group. How do you make things contagious? How do things not just become viral, but how do they get sold one-on-one -on -one without being incentivized? This is powerful. <clears throat> Chris Smith just came out with a new book, Conversion Code. And he also came out with an online course for that, I'm four uh, courses into the new conversion code, the new book, not the one that's a couple years old. I'd get the new book and I'd go pay the 150 bucks a month and I'd sign up for his courses um, uh, on the fourth or fifth one. And I will tell you, Chris has blown me away so far. I have so much content from that to take to my team and it's so real and it's in real life time that I'm busting at the seams. I even wanted to share some of it with you guys today. For you guys that are running teams and holding staff members accountable, radical candor, how do you be a kick-ass boss and still like be the authoritarian and then still be like healthy with your relationships and friends? This book right here, um, I used, when I ran the, um, the brokerage, a lot of people were like, man, I hate Adam. I don't really like him. But then they'd hang out with me in public. They're like, man, you are super cool. And I had to figure out how to manage all four of these quadrants right here. This ain't necessarily a book that I read um, in the last year, so neither is this one. Uh, Dan has been around, uh, and so scale up is huge, and tie this into the Rockefeller habits, and this has been very instrumental with how I built my traditional teams, my brokerage, and now I'm building the modern team as well. Um, this right here is like very very important because a lot of people will just make posts and they're gone. They post videos, they make offers or whatever. I want you guys to think, I can show you guys some of my marketing. If maybe uh, James has me back, I build perennial content. I want my content and my value propositions. I want them to be around for a long time. I don't want to be changing them. I don't want the, to, you know, be drowned out just like the you know, like guaranteed sold people or whatever, like we ran ads against all of that stuff. And, and so I look at what everybody else is doing and I go the different, a different route, but I want to make sure that mine, my marketing and I like, and I don't know how Dan, how long has Dan, you know, track me or watch me. Some of the stuff that we run and it still works today is nine years old. All we got to do is keep giving it a facelift with a new twist. Um, the, the subtle art of not giving a fuck. Like, I do not give a shit what anybody thinks. However, revenue share has got so big that it's like, okay, there's certain things that I might not do or risk because, you know, it's like I still work for a, comp like a company. And so, but once you quit giving a shit what people think about you, you are free. You are broke free from everything. And this is, this used to be a big, uh, issue with me. I used to care what people think, or I'm sure, or I'm not old enough yet, or I can't speak well enough yet, or I'm not deserving enough. I'm not working hard enough. I haven't put in the time. It's like, I don't know what I'm doing. Here's what I, here's what I'm going to tell you. Nobody knows what the hell they're doing. Everybody is just figuring it out. And so every single one of us is in uncharted territory. Persuasion. And if you're wanting to learn how to persuade people, control environments like Brent does, amazing at persuading people, controlling environments, and it all seems natural. And as I've learned about, you know, all of the events and how they're structured and what Brent has going on, it blows my mind how organic and natural it feels. But every single thing is controlled to a T to get a certain outcome 
at our events. And it, it was crazy once I was able to see behind what I was just seeing when I was normally there for a couple of years. And I'm going to end it with this, guys. <clears throat> Be so good that they can't ignore you. Because this is the best thing about EXP. It's a as equal opportunity. And it's not like you got to put enough time in on a board or you have to get promoted or you have to wait a certain amount of time or you have to do this or that. If you can do it, just do it. But be so good that they can't ignore you. But what happens is most people want to follow their passion, right? Instead of honing skills. And so this, this book really you know, highlights why skills trump passion any day of the week, because passion is kind of like motivation. It's going to wear off, right? It's only going to take you so far. And we know the habits and the skills are going to keep you in the game. And this is what most people like fail to understand when they start building revenue share. It is tough. It is another business pillar and you have to work a little bit at a time. And if you're still selling houses and you're having, you know, family and kids and, you know, church and all everything, time management is going to be critical and honing skills over time is going to be important. So don't build revenue share just because it's like, oh, I'm passionate about it or some residual income or whatever. Do it because you're doing it for yourself. I know why I'm building revenue share. And it's very personal to me and my journey and where I want to be in the next five years. So make it personal with you guys. I appreciate you guys. I look forward to a tag on Facebook. Let me know what was your best quote, what I got sparked, you know, a thought with you guys. And uh, hopefully you appreciated your time today. Adam, man, I, man, I, I really appreciate it. Um, and for everybody, I, I know we went, we went over like an hour. But um, but, you know, the, I think the, the content that he was going over was so important. That that we needed to he, he need to get it out. We need to get it recorded. I know some people had to kind of drop off because you know they had other things going on. But uh, the repo the reposting this is going to be on the Agent Builders Facebook group. If you're not part of Agent Builders Facebook group, just get with the, the person that um, you know your sponsor or somebody that you know invited mm -hmm. uh, regarding that information there, dude. Send but, me uh, send me send me the link, James. Look, if I, I had some of my people that couldn't get in, and it's like if you're on time, you're late. If you're five minutes early, you're on time. I was late. And so I told Gary before we hopped on here, I said, we're going to over deliver today. And we did that. So I appreciate you guys that stayed around because I don't want to be known for showing up late and then just cutting it off on a time zone. So Gary went and handled my other responsibilities so we could finish it. So um, over deliver and don't ask for anything in return other than a tag on Facebook. Appreciate you guys. I got to go. Love it, Adam, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Hey, once again, if uh, you know, we do these every second Friday of the month where, you know, somebody come on and just add tremendous value. Uh, normally, like I said, it's only like an hour. We usually go from 12 to one o'clock. But, um, you know, what he was actually putting out there, I, re I really wanted to get recorded. Um, and um, and to be honest with you, I'm going to go back and I'm going to listen to this myself for me as well. So, <laughs> you know, it's one of those things like it's just really good information. Um, if you're still on and, and somebody invited you um, here, I mean, definitely, you know, get back with them, thank them, whatever you want to know more about, like some of the stuff that we've been able to do to help grow business. Because like you said before, which is something we hang our hat on is the growing um, the real estate business and selling more houses. We help with that. Um, other than that, I'm not going to occupy anything else or anybody else's time. Um, you know, like I said, y'all, you know, you know how to get in contact with me. If anybody have any questions, appreciate, appreciate everybody. And, um, to the next event. Thanks, James.